people want to take stock to see where we are. What should be the first step after this meeting tonight to find out where you is? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things. One of the first things, of course, is to have a consultation with your physician. Now, and again, like I said, if it's a gynecologist, that's not usually where you want to go first. Um, so if you have a, a good internist or good family practice individual, then they can do that history and physical examination. Um, and most of the information will actually come from talking to you and asking the right questions and getting the appropriate answers. All right? So the general consultation is where I think one ought to start. And if you are identified as somebody who is a particularly at high risk, then you should be upwardly, uh, what's the word, referred, so that you should then go to a more specialist individual, whether it's a cardiologist or whether it's an internist, if you were seeing your family practitioner. But the people that can assess your heart are obviously going to be the cardiologist. But not everybody needs to see the cardiologist as the first shot. Now, you should know yourself. If you know you've been having tightness in your chest and shortness of breath, and depending on whatever you're doing, you feel dizzy, faint, lightheaded, nauseous, and so on, then you don't need to go to your GP to talk about that. And you sure don't need to go to the gynecologist or obstetrician unless you think it's due to pregnancy. Okay? So that's where you make that call and you go and see the cardiologist and say, I have a concern. Or I have several concerns and let them do the necessary. Does well, that make sense? If you have suspicion and you feel that something right in the point of your you can go straight to the cardiologist one time. Uh, that's my point. Yeah. That's my point. I would, if you already have a chest pain, you need to go waste two months right. talking to somebody right. who will think about where they should refer you. Okay? Right. Because we're not a very referring community. Okay, um, and, uh, and so we get into a lot of trouble. Now, in the States, the, the minute they think somebody has something wrong with their heart, they call the cardiologist okay. right away. Because if it is determined that you saw somebody twice and they had what were classical symptoms of heart disease and you did not refer them, oh, you just decide whether you want to sell your wife, your children, or the house to pay for the lawsuit because you will get sued in the States. All right, so as much as, much as they are litigious, the whole idea is, if you think I will benefit from seeing somebody else, please refer me. We don't always do that in the Caribbean. Bahamas and Cruz. Hey. Uh, yes, Doctor. I have had a question about, let's say for instance, if one gets older, mm -hmm. in good condition, I do a lot of running, but yep. I'm concerned about the blocked artery that you had here, the blocked blood vessel. Right. I want to know how, how, I, how would I go about checking to see if I have a, a blocked artery. Uh, for you, Abe, knowing that you are a marathon runner, you need to have what's called a calcium score, the coronary calcium score. Right. It's a special test that's done on the, this machine, on the CT scanner, right. where we look at your heart, we look at your blood vessels, and we look for calcium. Um, this is not calcium in the blood now. This is calcium in the wall of the blood vessel. Okay? So, if you have cholesterol deposits in the blood vessel wall, that's coronary artery disease. Period. End of story. You just ain't died from it yet. Okay? Or you have not had a heart attack. If you have cholesterol deposited in the blood vessels, calcium attaches to the cholesterol. Now, you can't see cholesterol because the x-rays go straight through it. But calcium is like bone. So the x-rays are not going to go through it. So you can see the calcium. So what we do is we look for microcalcification in the blood vessel wall and there are very few things that put it there, the most important one being cholesterol. And the cholesterol is the substrate on which you end up forming your heart attacks. So for someone like you, who's in excellent shape, and putting you on the treadmill, all you can do is make the doctor mad, because you could be there running for half hour, and he only used to people running for six, seven minutes, and then they're huffing and puffing, and, they, and then you get to tell them, it's okay, you could stop now, and you could still be there running half hour later. So I wouldn't even waste my time with you. We will just say, come my brother, come, you need, just need to do the calcium score, but yes, you still want to go to the consultation, you get your basic blood test, you know your lipid profile, and all of those things, lipids being your cholesterol and so on. You want to know those things, but the real linchpin for you is to do a calcium score and see, because if your calcium score is zero, continue doing what you're doing. But Doc, is that house money or car money? Oh no, that's, that's my, <laughs> it's actually neither, it's actually neither, it's actually neither, you can actually get you can actually get, for people that are not insured, you can actually get a calcium score done at the center for around 300 bucks, 300, oh, 350. Very good. Thanks, sir. And it actually will tell you more than the treadmill test. 
At bear money. That's, that's bear money. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are on the weekend with the boys. <laughs> Anybody else? That's it? Okay, well then listen folks, it's been my absolute pleasure and honor to be able to address you. Thank you all for coming out on a Sunday evening. Father, was this okay for you at 7 o'clock? We'll see you at 7. Oh, God, be the God.